Hey team, Trader's War Room, I'm Chuck. Hey, we got a good episode in our channel today for you. Got the aftermarket review, new segment with the recap I promised you, and we're gonna get to it with some more thought-provoking content. And our fundamental lesson today is gonna be managing your portfolio. Hey, still looking for those likes, those subscribes, those shares, join the Facebook group. We're starting to get a little bit of traction, but we still need your help. At Trader's War Room, we look at the stock market as a war zone. Sections and stocks, those are our battles. It's our job to attack, destroy, and conquer these stocks and these battles. We can do it together as a team, but we need your help. So if you're with me, follow me, and let's go to war. Trader's War Room reminds the viewer that this channel and content on the channel is for entertainment and education purposes only. And hey, welcome back. Let's get to the AMR, all right? Dow up 0.69%, S&P up 1.48%, NASDAQ killed it up 2.56%. Best industry, renewable industry, second day in a row, okay? 11%. Worst industry, multi-line utilities, down negative 2%. Most active stocks, SNDL, 826 million. It's a pharmacy and medical research. It's a marijuana stock. FTFT, 290 million. Online services, it's a blockchain that Bitcoin services. A lot of action in that Bitcoin going on lately. All right. Top gainers, pre market, SOS, 78%. It's lending and banking. Market, FTFT, 242%. We just talked about that blockchain stock. And after market, Works, W-O-R-X, 71% software and IT. Losers today, pre-market, U-O-N-E, down negative 23%, broadcast and media. Market, D-G-L-Y, negative 24%, communications and networking. And aftermarket, S-R-P-T, negative 51%, the biotech. Overall, 4,055 in the green and 1,698 in the red. Next, we're going to start with our new section, the recap of the Research and Learn. Yesterday on Research and Learn, we talked about how stocks and politics play into each other. So I found a couple of things. Historically, stocks and politics have played along with interest rates, up or down, inflation, economic outlook, whether it's positive, more bullish market, or a negative economic outlook, more bearish market. Policies, foreign and domestic, will depict where people are putting their money and wars, you know, humanitarian missions. That's going to decide where people are putting money. Business is going to be booming, some are not. And it's a lot of times the stock market is going to react to those big humanitarian missions and wars. All right, team, we're going to get into our fundamental lesson which is managing, okay? How do we manage our portfolio, all right? Well, there's a couple things that really hit home that I wanna talk about first today with managing our portfolio, okay? We want a safety net of stocks, all right? We want conservative valuations and good valuations of stocks and businesses we get into, all right? We wanna look for future growth in stocks, their intrinsic value of what they have, and we wanna be picky with these stocks, okay? So when we're looking at safety net of stocks, we're talking about being diversified, all right? We don't want all our eggs in one basket. If tech's down and banking's up, we wanna make sure we got a little bit in tech, a little bit in banking, so it can counterbalance. And then again, if banking's down and tech's up, we're still not completely bottomed out and zero, okay? We throw all our money into tech and it bottoms out, we're broke, all right? So we need to be diversified. Conservative valuation, okay, so we want to be, we want to give valuation on these stocks and businesses and we want to be conservative, okay? Oh, this is the next thing since, you know, sliced bread. Well, we don't want, we want to go there, okay? We want to be, hey, this is good, but I need to look into it a little bit more, all right? You're a great stock, but are you the future stock? Are you it, okay? Tesla, a good example of this, all right? A lot of people were counting Tesla down, it's overpriced, it's overvalued. Tesla just got bumped up by two really well-known analysts bumped up to 850 today. All right, so Tesla is booming. There's a lot of believers in Tesla. There's a lot of haters in Tesla too, but Tesla's outperforming the market and they're booming right now, okay? So we wanna give them conservative valuation, 
But we also don't want to go into a negative valuation because if a stock is worth something and we keep thinking that, oh, it's not as valued as other people think it, we might miss out on it. All right. And that goes into being picky with our stock. OK, we want to be picky, but we don't want to be too picky and we don't want to just pick any random thing. OK, uh, someone said I can't remember who it was, but. There's a saying like, you know, someone asks you like, hey, you like this? It's like, yeah, I got stock in it. I used to think that was just a saying, but now I understand what it means. You know, I like the iPhone. Hey, I got stock in Apple. That's why I typically get my long growth hold stocks that I hold for a long time and things that I use, things that I like, things that I enjoy because I enjoy it. Other people enjoy it. So I got Apple. You know, I enjoy Facebook. I got Facebook. I enjoy Tesla. I think Tesla's amazing. I got Tesla. These stocks are things that I believe in will continue to outperform the market in the future and rise up. So when you're looking at stocks that you want, a lot of times you should probably look at things that you have and that you enjoy and are good qualities and go with those type of stocks. Now, if we're talking about penny stocks and you want to be real quick and find that supernova, you might we might not be talking about these other stocks because we're talking about stocks that'll get maybe five and ten percent returns maybe 20%, you know, we're not looking for a hundred percent booms. All right. So if you're talking about penny stocks, there's a lot of different ones out there. Usually a good reference for penny stocks is you look at sectors that have been getting beat up. They've been red, 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 right? Eventually they got to turn green and maybe you can hit that boom and it spikes up real quick and you cash in at the low, you cash out at the high, and then it just drops off like normal penny stock goes back to its low. So either way you look at it, it's you, you want to be conservative, you want to have that safety net, you want to look for the intrinsic value, and you want to be picky. All right, next up, thought provoking content. Thought provoking content. So, with Biden going to take the presidency, what do you think sectors are going to boom during his presidency over the next four years or possibly eight years? All right, you've seen a lot of renewable energy, you know that. A lot of EV stocks are booming. Tesla, Neo, Exxon, Lee, you know, a lot of uh, these charging stations and this, you know, charging power, fuel cell, plug, blink, these are all booming right now. And what's the, what's the trend with a Biden presidency compared to a Trump presidency or a Democrat president compared to a Republican president? So that's the thought provoking content. What kind of projection are we in in the stock market with Biden as our new commander in chief? All right, guys, for research and learn, we're going to talk about charts, right? Specifically entry and exit points. I'm going to put a couple different demonstrations, examples of charts on this video. And I want you guys to look at it and think when would be a good entry point be for these, these, uh, charts and when would a good exit point be? Or when would a good entry point be? And then another re-entry point on a dip. So that's going to be our research and learn part. Chart and pattern reading. This chart shows plug. Look at that first yellow long line. Anywhere there would have been a good loading zone. And then it shot up. That red arrow points at the peak where it would have been risky to have bought in, but possibly a decision to sell. But... If you would have held, if you noticed the green line sloping up, it would have been a good move on you. Now, where it's at its all-time high, it's another risky move. Possibly a good time to sell, but it could prove to keep going up. Here is another example of a chart, DGLY. Anywhere on that yellow line would have been a good loading zone because it shot up very quickly. And then at the top of that peak would have been a good time. The green arrow shows a good time to go ahead and sell because then it sharply declined. Anyone that bought in at the dip of that first red arrow would have been upset because it just bottomed out from there. Tesla is odd because anywhere on the yellow would have been good loading zones because it's done nothing but just continue to climb and outperform the market. At that red arrow is where it's at its all-time high today, and it might be a good time to continue to get because it could just keep going up, 
but it's risky because you just are expecting it to pull back and come to a consolidation type area. So it might be a good opportunity to wait on purchasing for that pullback. All right, team, that's it. So good video. Hopefully we're getting some guys. Starting to get some views, starting to get some likes. The channel is coming along slow. Only our first week, told you it's grassroots. We're building this up from the ground up. We're doing this together, so need your support. Like, share, subscribe, join the Facebook group, leave me a comment so that my team and I can get back to you and we can make relevant comment, re relevant material to stimulate your guys and have, give you tools to make you successful. Remember, here at Traders War Room, we're looking at the stock market as a war zone. Stocks and sectors, those are our battles. We're attacking, destroying, and conquering all these challenges together, okay? But we can't do it by ourselves. We can only do it as a team, so we need your support. So if you're ready, follow me, and let's go to war.